Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we're going to look at the difference between lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride when it comes to reducing carbonyl compounds. In the last two videos, we looked at the mechanism for reducing a carbonyl to an alcohol using sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. For some of the carbonyls, they both react the same way. We said that aldehydes and ketones will be reduced by NABH4 and LIALH4. But the more extreme examples, especially the carboxylic acid and carboxyl derivatives, will be reduced by lithium aluminum hydride, but not by sodium borohydride. And the question is why? When you understand why they differ and how they react, you won't have to memorize and you won't be confused. We learned that NABH4 is the weaker reducing agent and LIALH4 is the stronger reducing agent. In organic chemistry, something weak means that it's not strong enough to react or simply is less reactive. Something strong is strong enough to react, it wants to react, and that makes it more reactive. And the question is why? Both of these reducing agents have a positive counter ion, which we can think of as a spectator ion. We have a positive lithium, and aluminum hydride, which is negative. We have a positive sodium and borohydride, which is negative. Each hydride reagent has a central atom, aluminum or boron, which are exceptions to the octet rule. Ideally, they will have only three bonds for a total of six electrons rather than eight in their octet. The negativity comes from a fourth hydrogen, giving the central atom a fourth bond and a formal charge of minus one. That hydride by itself would be a strong base, and being carried by that central atom slows it down and makes it a good nucleophile for reduction. If the atom, aluminum or boron, acts as a carrier, ask yourself, how does the carrier impact the hydride's ability to attack? If we find these two atoms on the periodic table, notice they're on the right side in group three. Also remember periodic table trends, Electronegativity increases up and towards the right, and size increases down and towards the left. Comparing boron to aluminum, boron is the more electronegative atom, and aluminum is the larger and less electronegative atom. Not only that, but aluminum has one more shell compared to boron, and that means it has more electrons surrounding that nucleus before we can finally get to hydrogen. If aluminum is larger, the hydrogen has a longer bond, and if it's less electronegative, it's not being held as strongly. Boron, being more electronegative, having fewer shells and a shorter bond, is holding on to that hydrogen much more tightly. And this is the key. I want you to picture a scenario where aluminum and boron are both teenage nannies in the park watching their four hydride kits. Boron is stronger. It holds on to the kid stronger. And just picture that as the nanny watching the kid. And as soon as that kid tries to do something he shouldn't, Boron is right there pulling the kid out of trouble. Aluminum, on the other hand, isn't watching as closely. She's on her cell phone, texting her boyfriend, checking Facebook. And if the kid tries to do something, it takes her some time before she realizes that he's in trouble. And that means that kid is going to cause a lot more damage before the nanny realizes what's going on. Bringing this back to Origo, aluminum is not holding on to hydrogen as strongly. Therefore, hydrogen is more likely to break away and attack, while boron is holding on so tightly, it doesn't really let the hydrides go where they want to. And so the trouble, the reactions that they can get into, are much less severe. So we know that sodium borohydride is weaker and less reactive, and we know why lithium aluminum hydride is stronger and more reactive. But why are aldehydes and ketones more likely to react in a weak condition than something like a carboxylic acid, an ester, or an amide? The answer lies in the carbonyl carbon and its ability to attract that nucleophile, to attract that attack. Remember that a carbonyl carbon is partially positive because of the resonance it can have with the oxygen atom. If oxygen can pull on those electrons, carbon is left exposed with a partial positive charge. That partial positive charge is enough to attract a negative or partially negative hydride, 
and the attack happens rather quickly. This has to do with the fact that on a ketone, the neighboring carbons, or on an aldehyde, the carbon and hydrogen, are not doing much to discourage that partial positivity. They're not doing much to prevent the attack from happening. But when you have an electronegative atom nearby, like the oxygen in carboxylic acid or ester, and the nitrogen in the amide, think about how they react. These electronegative atoms have at least one lone pair of electrons. And if the carbonyl carbon is positive right next to a lone pair of electrons, we're going to have additional resonance. When the hydride wants to attack, it now has to compete with the resonance from the nearby electronegative atom. It's almost like it's being blocked by the resonance of that nearby negative atom. Boron, holding closely to its hydrogen atoms, is preventing its kids or its hydrides from getting into that fight competing with the electronegative atom. Those hydrides are not strong enough to attack and overcome the nearby resonance. But lithium aluminum hydride, being so much more reactive, doesn't care that there's resonance nearby. It's strong enough to overcome that resonance and will still find a way to attack the carbonyl carbon despite what's going on nearby. The final question is if they both do the same thing for the weaker molecules, but only LiAlH4 will reduce the stronger ones, why not just use lithium aluminum hydride for everything? The answer is twofold. On an exam, piece of paper, just write whatever reagent you can remember. But in lab, because lithium aluminum hydride is more reactive, it's more dangerous. So if you want to do just a simple reduction, use the safer, slower sodium borohydride. Another way to look at it is if you want to do selective reduction, where you only want to reduce one carbonyl and not another, ask yourself which reagent will choose one over the other. Take a look at this example. We have many different options for potential reduction. We have a benzene ring with pi bonds. We have a simple double bond. We have a carbonyl in the form of a ketone and another in the form of an amide. If I want to reduce benzene, I'll require one set of conditions. If I want to reduce just the pi bond, I require a second set of conditions. And then finally, the ketone and the amide, again, unique set of conditions. Relating it back to this tutorial, if I react this molecule with sodium borohydride, the only thing reduced is the ketone, which gives me a secondary alcohol. If I react this with lithium aluminum hydride, I'll reduce both the ketone and the amide, where the ketone gives me a secondary alcohol, and the amide gives me an NH2. Oxygen is completely removed. Be sure to try the Redox practice quiz on my website where you have more selective reduction questions, also focusing on benzene, pi bonds, and more. You can find this entire video series along with my Redox practice quiz and cheat sheet by visiting my website, layerforsci.com redox.